pixel eye displays are some of my favorite ways to do eyes for robots. So today we're gonna make a geometry notes group to make just that. A nice fully controllable pixel display for eyeballs. In the description you will find a pre-made system which is also connected to an armature so it's even easier to control. But we're gonna go ahead and make the note group ourselves. So we're gonna start in a new file of Blender and let's just delete the default cube. And let's add a circle, this is gonna be the screen for our eye. We're gonna click tab to go into edit mode and just press F to fill the shape. And let's go back out into object mode and pull up our geometry notes editor over here. So let's add a new group and we're gonna disconnect the geometry for now. You can press Ctrl and right click to just cut one of the lines. And let's press Shift A and add a grid node. For now, I'm gonna set the size to 0.16. Uh, and let's just set the vertice count to about 30. We can change this later. If we connect our mouse, you'll see how it looks. It's just a tiny little grid right here. Uh, and if we go into wireframe mode, we can see the resolution as well. Next, we will add a instance on points node. The geometry will disappear because we actually have to make an instance. Uh, let's do that by getting a cube, just a cube object. And because I want to regulate the size later, let's just add a math node. And set it to multiply. And we're just going to multiply one with 0 0.005. Uh, connect that to our size and connect the mesh to our instance. I'm going to make a 2D display, which can also keep it 3D. Uh, to make it 2D, you just change the vertices on the Z axis to one. Uh, and now it will just be a grid of planes. Now with this multiply node, I'm going to connect our first value to the one. So we have a value that controls how big the pixel size is. If you want to change the value of this group input, you just go to the modifier tab and here in your geometry nodes tab, uh, it will be here. So we can change it over here and make it smaller. And we're gonna make more of those parameters. So you can just customize it however you want and also make the eyes move and do all sorts of different expressions. We're just gonna keep the value at one and go on with the rest of our node group. Now to make the eye and the pupil, we're gonna use a bunch of math nodes. Let's start by turning this from a square to a circle. So it's actually a circular eye. Let's start by getting a position node. Uh, and we're also gonna get a separate XYZ node uh, and connect those two up. We have to use some simple math to get the circle shape and we're gonna use the delete geometry node for that. Uh, so let's add that in and we're gonna set it after the grid and before the instance on points. Our mesh has again disappeared. Uh, this is because we're deleting all the geometry. We have to make a selection so that everything outside of the circle gets deleted. The math we're gonna use is pretty simple. Uh, it's X squared plus Y squared uh, and we're gonna compare this to some value. And in this case, we're gonna check for values greater than this value. So let's do that by getting our math node. Uh, we're gonna set the math node to power. We're gonna set the exponent to two, so the input gets squared. So let's connect our X value. Uh, just copy this by pressing Shift D and connect our Y value as well. And let's just duplicate this and set this to add. And we're gonna add both uh, values together. Then let's get another math node and set it to greater than. Uh, and let's connect our value here. And let's connect the output to the selection value of the delete geometry node. If we start to play around with this value, uh, not much is changing because we have to make it very, very tiny before anything happens. Uh, that's pretty annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the beginning and get a vector math node. And let's put it in between the position and the separate x, y, z and set it to a multiply. And we're just going to pull this value up a lot. Uh, okay, I'm going to set it to 45. You might think we could set it lower as well, but it's pretty useful for doing the pupil later. So we can use normal values to do that as well. So I'm going to set it to 45 uh, and then increase the threshold here to about, let's say, 6. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit more to get a nicer shape. Yeah, that's it. To keep it organized, I'm gonna rename this node to I size. I'm gonna name other nodes as well, so it's easier to see what's going on. Now, a neat thing we can do is actually uh, pull this out a little bit and create another node in between here. Let's set it to multiply and create one here as well. Um, let's set this to one for a second, the lower one. Uh, and if we play with this value, you can see that the shape changes. Pretty similar to an eye actually closing like that. Uh, so that's exactly what we're gonna name it. This is gonna be close eye and then up and down. And the other one actually does the same, but in the Y axis, which is uh, pretty interesting. So let's just rename it as well, close eye left right. I'm gonna connect these values to the group input later. If I do it now, there will be a lot of lines like this going through everything. It will make everything harder to see. 
I'm just going to select these nodes and move them up a little. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate them. Uh, first thing I'm going to change is change this greater than node to a less than node. We're going to connect the X and Y value just the same as we did with the other node group. And nothing is happening until we start playing around with this threshold value. You will see that we get a pupil. And we can also use these values to change the shape of the pupil. Uh, so let's rename them. Uh, I'm just going to change I to pupil so it's easy to understand. And we want the pupil to be able to move around. So let's select the beginning part and move it over to the left a little. And we're just going to copy this add node and put it at the X value and then put another one at the Y value. Uh, let's set the values to zero so it's actually back in the middle. If we start playing around with it now, you can see that the pupil can move up and down uh, and left and right as well. And the neat thing is the rest will still work as intended. So let's name these nodes. Uh, I'm going to name this move pupil up down. And then the second one, move pupil left, right. Let's get them back to their original values here. You can do that by pressing backspace. The next thing I want to add is a frown. So basically like eyebrows going down like that or at the bottom so that it's basically able to function as eyebrows. We're going to go back to the beginning uh, and duplicate these two nodes the multiply and separate X, Y, Z. Uh, let's set the value back to zero for a bit, but we have to change it later. Uh, and let's connect our position to the input vector. Let's get a little more room by moving it way up here. And then I'm going to need three math nodes. Uh, so let's get the first one. The first one is going to be multiply. Then the second one is going to be an add node. And the third one is going to be a less than node. Once we have the nodes, let's connect our Y value to the multiply value here and connect the rest of the nodes to each other. And since we're making a selection, we can just add this to the selection we have over here. So let's add another add node and we're going to connect our result. Going back to the three nodes, I'm going to set the multiply to zero for now. And I'm going to connect the X value to the add node over here. If we now play around with the less than value, it will only blink in and out of view. Uh, this is because we have to play with this multiply node. I'm going to multiply the position vector by 10. And if we now start to play with the less than value, you will see uh, what the node group does. It can delete pixels on the X axis. And if we start to play around with the multiply value, uh, we can actually change the slope of this selection. If you tilt it like this, uh, it kind of seems like an angry looking eye. And now all we need to do is just duplicate these three nodes and change the less than to a greater than. And we're going to connect everything just like before. Connect the Y value to the multiply node and connect the X value to the add node. And we can just go ahead and add these two results together. Uh, let's up this value a little bit. There we go. We now have it on the bottom of the eye as well. Uh, and we can change this so it looks extra, extra angry. So yeah, with these two nodes uh, together with the close eye node, you can make some pretty interesting eye shapes. I'm just going to rename these nodes once again. So let's call this upper eyelid, lower eyelid, upper frown, and lower frown. And we can just quickly bring these down to zero. Uh, maybe bring this down and bring this up so the eye is just normal. What we're going to do next is actually connect all the named nodes we have now to our group input. But before we do that, we do one last thing. All the way at the end, I'm going to add a transform node uh, and put it over here. And I'm just going to bring the display up in the Z axis just a tiny little bit. Because we're actually going to use this circle as well. It's now very tiny, but we're going to make something that makes us as big as the circle is. And if they're on top of each other, we will get Z fighting, of course. But first, we're going to make parameters so we can control all of these named nodes we've made. This is kind of a tedious workflow. Just connect them all up. And then here in the side menu, you can change the names. You can get this menu by pressing N. Uh, then going to group. Uh, and here you can change the name of your input. You can also change the default value and the minimum and maximum value. The thing is that whatever you connect the value to will be the default value at first. Another input you can also connect is the vertices input over here. So you can actually change the resolution of the pixel display. So I'm just going to speed up the part where I connect everything. We're going to do a few things to make it work better for two eyes uh, and then another few things to just improve the quality of it a little bit. I'm just going to press X to get rid of the group and create a new group. Now we haven't deleted our geometry notes group. It's still available here. 
Uh, but we can also get it by pressing Shift A and just searching for our Geometry Nodes group. Here it is, it's called I. Uh, and if we now connect it up, uh, we will have it back again. First thing I want to implement is I want us to be able to go into edit mode, add any number of circles, and then it will automatically create a display over there that is as big as the circle. We could actually cut this off because it doesn't use any input geometry and let's move it down for now. And what I want is I want to create a point right in the middle of this circle. We can do that by getting a mesh to points node uh, and let's set it to faces. Let me actually go out of edit mode uh, and we're going to connect the geometry to the mesh uh, and we're going to add a instance on points node. Let's connect our points to the input over here. Uh, and actually this one, we don't want it to be connected to the output, but to the instance input over here. If we now connect our instances to the group output, uh, we will have our shape back again. Next, I want the shape to be as big as the circle we have over here. And to do that, we're gonna use the face area node. I'm just gonna put it over here because we also need another node, which is one of the new nodes. It's the sample nearest surface node. And we're just gonna connect the input geometry to the mesh input over here. And if we now connect the area to the value and the output value to the scale, uh, you will see that this has scaled up a bit. To make it bigger, we will need a math node. So let's add one. Um, we're gonna change it to multiply. And if you now change this multiply value, the shape will grow bigger. We can't really see where the circle is and we actually want to add it in. Uh, so let's do that right now by getting a join geometry node. Uh, put that over here. And we're gonna connect the group input to the join geometry. And uh, you can see that we have the circle back. To make it a little more organized, I'm just gonna press shift and right click and drag it along this line over here. It creates an extra point we can move up. Uh, so it's nice and out of the way like that. Now, if we go into edit mode and start scaling what we have, uh, you will see that we run into a problem. The shape is not scaling with the circle. It's actually scaling faster than the circle. This is because we are using the face area node. And as you might know, the area of something is proportional to the square of the width of something. This means is that if we have a circle, for instance, and we make the diameter 10 times bigger, then the area will be 100 times bigger. To fix this, we're gonna need a power node. So let's add another math node, uh, set it to power, and we need the opposite of squaring it, which is a square root. And taking the square root of something is the exact same as giving it an exponent of one half. So since one half is the default value, we only have to connect it up. And if we start scaling it now, you will see that it scales linearly with our shape. Now to get the shape as big as the circle, we can of course play with this multiply node, which has to go just under 10, like that. So now we've done two things. Uh, we can just scale this in edit mode uh, and it will scale with the circle. And we can also duplicate it and we get a second eye and we can scale this down and it just works perfectly. However, one thing that doesn't work is rotation. So in edit mode, if I take this plane over here and start uh, rotating it, the shape won't rotate with it. So that's the next thing we're gonna fix. And I want to make a little room so we can actually connect something to the rotation input over here. Uh, and let's add a normal node. We're also gonna need another sample nearest surface node. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one and we're gonna set it to vector. And let's connect our input geometry and connect the normal to the value. And the final node we're gonna need is an align Euler to vector node. Once we have that, let's connect our value to the vector, not the rotation, but the vector uh, and connect our rotation to the rotation input on the instance on points node. Now it has flip, we can fix that by just setting the align Euler to vector node to Z. And now if we go into edit mode and start rotating this around, I can duplicate it, rotate it like this, scale it down. It all works perfectly. Now you might think we are done right now because we can use this node group to actually move everything. We can set keyframes on it, uh, but actually there's another problem. Uh, I can take this one and just move it over to here and then duplicate it and let's create another one here. Um, and pretty much everything works. So we can move the eyes uh, and we can also close the eyes like this. But if we start using the frown, uh, we can do that by bringing the upper eyelid down uh, and then playing around with this value. Uh, you will see that obviously it doesn't really work like that. I would say the right eye should frown like this and the left eye should do this. And luckily it's not too difficult to fix that. We're just gonna duplicate our node group here and we're also gonna duplicate this instance on points node. Now we're gonna connect the points uh, and the rotation and the skill just like before. 
So let's pull these down. Uh, and we're going to make a separation on the x-axis. So there's going to be eyes on this side and on that side. And that is going to determine if this uh, frown here is flipped. So we're going to get a position node and we're also going to get a separate xyz node. We're going to get a math node and set it to greater than and we're going to connect the y value. And we're going to set it to zero. This way it checks for everything that is on this side of the x-axis. And to check the other side we can simply get a boolean math node uh, and set it to not. This will basically give us the inverse of whatever we're selecting. So all that's left to do is connect this up, uh, connect the boolean to the first instance uh, and connect just the value to the second instance. And we're going to plug those into the selection. And of course we need to connect this instance to points node to the join geometry node so it actually appears. And now if we go to one of these nodes we can just change the frown value to be the opposite of what it was. So instead of minus 0.6 it's going to be positive 0.6. Uh, and that way we have our frown. We can also do it with one value. So let's get a value node, uh, then another math node, uh, and set it to multiply and multiply by minus one. And we can just connect it up like that uh, and connect the multiply output to the upper frown here and connect just the value to the upper frown here. And now if we change this value, it will affect both of the eyes. And we can of course also do the same for the lower frown. Now, if you want everything to be on the side again, uh, you're going to have to copy this uh, group input node and connect everything up just like before. So if you want to move the pupil, you would create a new value, connect it to the input over here, and then connect the same value to the input on the other node. And this way we can move both eyes at once. The project file in the description has all the values and also has all the values for the individual ones all in one list. And they're also parented to an armature. You can just move them around, scale them and put keyframes on them. And it's very easy to control. Obviously you can also just put keyframes on the values themselves and animate them that way. The next thing we're gonna do is make a simple material for the eyes. We're gonna go all the way to the end of our geometry nodes group and actually let's create another joint geometry node and put it after the first one. And instead of connecting the original geometry here, uh, we're just gonna cut it off and connect it over here. This is because we want to keep the original material on the circle so that won't be affected when we set the material for the pixels. Setting the material is pretty easy. We just get a set material node and put it in between the two joint geometry nodes. So let's just open up an extra window so we can easily select our material later. Uh, and switch into the shader editor. I'm also going to switch to shader mode and let's get rid of this little arrow here. And let's first make a material for the back plate. Uh, I'm just going to go for a very simple black material. I'm going to pull this all the way down to black uh, and put the roughness at one. And let's just quickly create an extra slot so we can actually make a new material. Uh, I'm going to call this one I. Uh, and I'm also going to select this material in our geometry nodes group by going to the set material node and clicking our new material. Now we can already see the contrast between the back plate and the actual eyes. We can move the pupils like this as well. And I actually want to give it some emission. So let's go down to our emission over here. Uh, and let's bring that up and I want to give it a nice blue color. And another cool thing you can do easily is make it curved. Let's do that quickly by creating a new mesh. Uh, let's create an UV sphere. And just really quickly we're going to put one over here. Uh, and then go into edit mode. Select everything and duplicate it and put the other one over here. And I'm going to go out of edit mode and shade them smooth and give them a new material. And this could, for instance, be a kind of eyeball shape. I have this shape for my robot character over here, which is also like a curved shape. Let's just name this glass uh, because we're going to make it transmissive. Uh, so let's up the transmission to one. So let's turn on cycles by going to our render properties over here. And then we turn it on over here. Going back to our material, I'm just going to join these areas. Um, and I'm going to decrease the roughness to zero. And now it doesn't really look good at all. Uh, so I'm going to go into edit mode. Let's set it to individual origins. Uh, and let's scale them up a bit. Maybe like that. I'm going to bring them down. So it's more like, more like that. So it's just clipping. Next I'm going to go into orthographic view. And just select all of these faces right here. I'm going to get rid of those. Press delete and delete just the faces. Oh, actually missed some of them. Let's actually get rid of those too. There we go. So yeah, very quickly we created an effect so that it actually seems curved like this. Hi, this is me from the future. Um, if you get this effect uh, that it actually appears twice, once on the back plate itself and once on the curved surface, you can actually fix that in the material tab very easily. We're just going to get a light path node. We're going to isolate just the curved surface. We do that with a math node. 
uh, set it to subtract. And what we're going to do is take a value of one and subtract the camera ray input from it. If we now connect it to our emission strength value, you will see that it works. And if we now get another math node and set it to multiply, we can control the brightness of our display. I just find this a little bit better. Uh, it seems like they're real eyeballs. You can also play with the IOR value to actually change the appearance of it. Just keep it between one and two and you'd most likely be fine. So yeah, that concludes this tutorial on the pixel eye display. Let me know your favorite animated character that also has pixel eye displays. My favorite is probably Ben from Treasure Planet. I know a lot of people hate him, but I just kind of love him. So yeah, I would love to know. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end, you are a legend. And if this tutorial was useful to you, you can consider leaving a like on the video. Uh, you can also subscribe to stay updated on future videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.